Hello everyone, I'm Jessica and today I'm here for my wrap up for the month of May. In the month of May I read a grand total of 13 books and a grand total of 5,467 pages. I also did a 24 hour readathon this month and I will link that in the description box below as well as in the cards. So if you want to check out my 24 hour readathon you can do that. I believe I finished four books during that but it was the first weekend of the month so I don't really exactly remember how many books I finished that day. I think it was four though. As always I will be starting with my lowest rated book going up to the highest so we are going to start with my one and only DNF for the month and that is Dracula by Bram Stoker. It was just really 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 boring. It's kind of like Frankenstein. Like I understand the concept that they were very important to their time and they did a lot of great things for writing but to read it today is just so boring. I was bored out of my mind. Next book is One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest by Ken Cassie. I gave this a 1.25 out of 5 stars. I'm sorry but I cannot get behind a main character who is a misogynistic, rapist, racist, coward essentially. I grasp the concept of what this book is supposed to represent and what it brings as far as its literary contents. But in a book where there are basically only three women, one of them is a raging bitch, the other two are complete and total sluts, which I'm not here for slut shaming, but that is what basically what the author is saying. Like, that's not me, that's them, that's what they say. And it's just so horrible. I just, it, it, mm -hmm. <laughs> The next is Bridge to Terabithia by Katherine Patterson. You know what this book's about. It's about two kids who build a bridge to Terabithia, kind of. I gave this a 2.75 out of 5 stars. Just because it made me cry doesn't mean I liked it. I thought the end of this was really good, but the rest of it I thought was pretty boring. Like the last 40 pages, maybe not even that many, 30 pages. The last 30 pages were good. The rest of it, yeah. I liked its view on grief and how grief affects different people differently. Um, but other than that, I really didn't find a whole lot in this book that just really appealed to me. The next book that I read was The Lost Coast by Amy Rose Capetta. I gave this a 2.75 out of 5 stars. This book is set around a group of queer witches who have magic because they're witches and one of their friends goes missing so they call another witch to them to help them find their lost witch of their coven. I do have a full review for this. I will link it in the description box below as well as in the cards. I received an e-arc of this from NetGalley in exchange for an honest review. I liked it but I didn't love it. I did enjoy the second half of the book. I did like where the plot went for the second half of the book but I was so lost for the first part of the half of the book that I just I I have a hard time giving it a higher rating when for the first half of the book I really had no clue what was going on. And for me it's just because of the way that the it jumped around from time period to time period and different character to character and characters that we've never heard of before and it's just one of those things in books that doesn't work for me. And as I said in my full review I understand why people are rating this so highly and I understand why people love it but it's not a book that is for me. Next was Shadow Me by Tahera Mafi. I'm sure at this point you know what this book's about. It's about a girl who has the power to kill people with her touch and she lives in a post-apocalyptic world. Why is post-apocalyptic so hard today? I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. It was okay. I almost DNF'd it at about 20%, but I continued reading because it is one of my best friend's favorite book series, so I'm trying to read it so that we can discuss it, but it's just not working for me. I didn't really love the characters, the pacing was a bit off for me, and I did not vibe with the writing style at all. That being said, I did enjoy the plot and I did enjoy the last half of the book. As you can tell, like my 3.25 to 2.75 basically is like, there were parts of the book that I really loved, but then there were parts of the book that just didn't work for me. So I did enjoy um, the characters more towards the end. There are, were a couple of characters that I enjoyed, but for the most part, I just didn't connect with anyone and I felt like the beginning of it was pretty boring. But at least in this book, they were setting up like a fictional world that I needed to know things about and I didn't understand what was going on. Whereas the last two were set in our world and I felt like I didn't know what was going on. So that's kind of the differentiation between the two. I've been trying to film all day. <laughs> I 
and every time I go to film someone's either running a lawnmower or a chainsaw it is what it is people as I said I did enjoy the end of this and I will continue reading it just maybe not in the immediate future next is what if it's us by Becky Albertelli and Adam Silvera I gave this a 3.75 out of 5 stars. It follows Ben and Arthur who have a meet cute and then several meet cutes and several first dates and it kind of just covers their relationship and covers the adventure of the two of them trying to find one another and come to grips with their relationship. While I do feel like this book was too long and that there were parts of it that did drag, I really enjoyed the characters and I didn't like the very realistic ending. I heard a lot of people complain about the ending because they didn't like the conclusion whereas as a 30 nearly 32 year old woman, I may be 32 by the time you see this video, I don't really know, um, but as a nearly 32 year old woman I completely understand how realistic this ending is and it works for me. I think depending on the audience of who's reading it may or may not like the ending to this. And once again, Flash has moved the tripod, so forgive me for the weird angle. Next is Something Strange and Deadly by Susan Dennard. I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. This follows Eleanor Fitt, who is a young girl in Victoria, London, and she lives with her mother, who is very much into being part of high society, even though their family is nearly broke. And her brother is in New York and travels trying to learn, and her father passed away, I believe, when she was dead. Then the zombies begin to rise, and Eleanor has to figure out um, how to get with this questionable team of characters known as the Spirit Hunters in order to help save London. This was a super fun and quick read that is highlighted by Susan's amazing writing and her always wonderful characters. I love Susan's writing, I love her characters, I love the way that she creates these worlds and the people that are in them. Really my only complaint about this book is that much like Truth Witch, which is the first book in Susan's other series, there was a little bit too much foreshadowing and so I felt like I kind of knew where the plot was going at least for this first book. Besides that, like I said, I found this to be a really enjoyable read. I absolutely loved it and I have already read the second book. You're going to see it soon. And the next book that I read is Riser by Becca C. Smith. This book follows Chel San who is a necromancer of sorts. She has the ability to bring dead things back to life and she's essentially fighting against an evil group that want to control population now that she lives in a world where people don't die. Yeah. I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. I do always say when I talk about this book that I am friends with Becca who is the author. I love the characters, I love the creativity with the plot, and we could have discussions for hours about age pro, which is the drug that people take in order to make them not age and it, the ethics of it and just the effects that it has on the populace and society as well as the evil villain who is evil to the extreme like so stinking evil that it is wonderful my main complaint about this book is that i do feel like some of the romance plots did take the story out of where it was going at some points um, but I did like the romance plots, but it's just one of those things where sometimes it didn't feel like it was at the right moment. The next book that I read is Throne of Fire by Rick Riordan. This is the second book in the Kane Chronicles, which follows Carter and Sadie Kane as they try to battle against Egyptian gods or join Egyptian gods to battle some of the other Egyptian gods. It's kind of a hot mess, but I love it. I gave this a 4.25 out of 5 stars fun, adventurous, love the characters, love all of the action in this. I do understand, as I said when I read the first book, I understand why people don't love these as much as the other Greek and Roman and Norse mythology because this has so much more of the Egyptian gods in it than what you see in the other, so there's so much more mythos, so much more lore in this, but as a grown-up, it makes me love it even more. Next is Starfall by Melissa Landers. This is the sequel to Starflight, which I read last month, I believe. 
I gave this a 4.25 out of 5 stars. This book follows two of the characters from the original story, Cassia and Kane. I love these characters. I love the adventure. I love all the action in these. It's just one plot point to another to another to another. There's just always something happening. I absolutely love that about it. My main aggression with this book and why I didn't give it a higher rating is because you see so little of the main couple from the first book. I mean, so little that it's almost like they're not even there. And for someone who got so much payoff from the first book and enjoyed it, I wanted to see more of them here. And I didn't get that and that made me kind of sad. But a great conclusion to this duology. I don't believe there's any talk of creating another book in this series, but I did really enjoy the way that this wrapped everything up at the end. Next is A Darkness Strange and Lovely by Susan Zenner. This is the follow-up to Something Strange and Deadly, which we talked about a few minutes ago, so you already know the synopsis and I don't need to give you that. I gave this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. Much like the Witchland series, I enjoyed this second book more than the first because I feel like it wasn't as heavy-handed with the foreshadowing. There were some great character additions in this and I love the plot points. It went in directions that I really had not expected it to go in and I cannot wait to get to the next book, hopefully in June. Only got three more to go! Next is A Lord of Shadows by Cassie Clare. This is the second book in the Dark Artifices series. Yes, I know, I finally read it. I gave this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I... Hmm... <laughs> I held off on reading this for so long because I knew there was a character death at the end. I didn't know which character, but I knew there was a character death at the end and I wanted to be able to go straight from this to Queen of Air and Darkness because Cassie is a master at slaying your soul. And quite honestly, it didn't make me sad as I had expected. It made me angry. I was super peeved at the ending of this book. If I had read this and not had Queen of Air and Darkness to go to immediately, I probably would have raged and burnt down the world. Um, there's just so much, so much anger at the end of this book. I understand why it happened the way it happened. I understand what it means for this world. I love this world. I am way more obsessed than any 32 year old woman should be. Loved it. Highly highly recommend the series and all of Cassie's series. And next is Queen of Air and Darkness by Cassie Clare. This is the third book to the Dark Artifice series. I gave this a 4.75 out of 5 stars and it was bloody amazing. So I have this theory. I am a fan of the books. I am a fan of the movie. I am a fan of the TV series, though I have not watched season 3B yet because I'm not a fan of Freeform. However, I have always looked at this series and its incarnations as if they are alternate realities of the world that we love in the books because everyone's major complaint is that the books are different from or the movie is different from the books and the TV show is different from the books and so it makes people angry that it's not an exact copy. My brain goes to I like that it's more like an alternate reality because it gives me surprises, there's different things in it, I get new characters, there's just new things to see, and it makes it fun. There are alternate realities. So it kind of gives some credence to my viewpoint of looking at the movies and the TV show as a different reality than this one because there really is different realities from this one. It's canon! So, yeah. Again, if you have not read this series, I absolutely recommend it. It has some of the best character and interpersonal relationships that I have ever seen in my life. Sometimes in Cassie's books the plots are not the best, but I feel like that's not really the case with these three. I think this trilogy has some of the best plot work that Cassie has ever done, but I also think that Cassie has the best character and interpersonal relationships that I have ever seen written. Just the way that her characters interact with one another makes me so fucking happy. I cannot express my happy and my joy with the series as a whole. And my highest rated and the final book that we're going to talk about this month is Zodiac Star Force. I didn't write down the names of the authors so I have to read it off the book. The author is Kevin Panetta and the artist is Paulina Ganesho or something like that. This was amazing! This is a graphic novel. Um, it's a bind up of five previous issues that follows a group of teen girls who had previously, before this book, 
been given powers by a goddess and use those powers to save the world. This book follows them after they've kind of fallen out. It's been a couple of years. They don't really communicate with one another anymore. They believe that they've saved the world and that there's no need for their powers anymore. And yet, monsters begin to show up. The thing I love about this is that you don't get any of the hero origin story and yet it's still so good. I gave this a 4.75 out of 5 stars. I absolutely loved it. Um, it has queer rep, it has different size rep, it has m racial rep, it has a lot of different rep in it and I really love that about it. The artwork was great. I love the plot. There is so much to love about this and I am so excited that there's another issue. I'm going to order it super soon. Um, I know I'm not supposed to be buying books this year except for new releases, but I don't even care. Like, this was so good. I cannot wait to read more. So that's it. Those were the 13 books that I read in the, the month of May and the one that I DNF'd. As always, I will link my Goodreads reviews for each of the books in the description box below so that you can check those out. Don't forget to look for my 24-hour readathon because that was super fun to film. I super love that. I'll probably be doing more of those in the future, either weekend reading vlogs or 24-hour readathons. I don't know which, maybe both. Um, I really enjoyed it, so I, I do plan to do more of those, even though I'm not great at vlogging. I do want to try it some more. That is all I have for today. I post reading, writing, and book-related videos on Mondays and Wednesdays and bonus videos on the weekends. And if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe if you don't want to miss anything else that I have going on in the future. Until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye!